Hi everyone. In this series, we are learning how to use adaptive card to build a bot like this, where you go and say, what are your services? And you will get a response like this. Uh, for, for doing this, we will use Power Platform, Power Virtual Agent, PVA in short. So in this series, I talked about we talked about basic cards just to get yourself warmed, although we'll not be using it. Then we, in the last video, we talked about adaptive card. We covered some basic concepts. We learned here that you can do something like this, uh, but there are some challenges. One challenge, big challenge is that for even for these two data to show in the bot, you have to really repeat. Uh, so when you actually click on this, work that you did in the adaptive card, like we saw in the previous video, you really had to keep on repeating your information for different services. So copy, paste, and modify, and your data and the presentation of this is really tied together. So in the current video, we're going to learn how to use some more advanced concepts. So actually make use of variable to put the data and use adaptive card to make use of that data. So it almost becomes like a template so that if your data changes, if you have to add uh, some additional services or some additional data, uh, you can easily do that and you don't have to uh, uh, modify your visualization. So very similar to how you do in the website, like where you have web uh, markups, CSS, and you have some data, some templates, HTML templates that you can populate with the data. Um, so that's what I'm going to cover in this video. By the way, if you're enjoying this series, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you need some help for one-on-one -on -one coaching or project delivery help, contact me at hello at cloudetica.com. Happy to talk to you. So let's get started. Um, first thing we will do, like I mentioned, we will make use of variable now where we'll put the data. So for that, I'm going to use a concept, another concept in PVA called variable management. And this variable that we will be using here will be a special type of variable called table. Um, and table is what we will use to feed into this adaptive card. Now, how do you create a table kind of variable? Because uh, by default, when you say set a variable, it just creates a var, uh, not really specific type. Uh, but we will learn how to do that here. But for that, let me also tell you what variable we're going to put here. So here's my GitHub site. Uh, this is the data that we're going to use, product.json. As you can see, this is like a table. So it's like an array of JSON objects, same information that we saw in this bot, but here you just have the data. So that's the data we're going to use. In the same GitHub, there's another uh, JSON which is actually the body that we're going to use. So as you can see from the code, it makes use of this items and just looks at different elements of that. So for example, title, description, price, and so on, and then decides how to present it. And as you can see, I'm not repeating anything. We're just making use of the data here in this file and just putting it there. So let's get started by putting the variable here. So I'm just going to copy it here, go back to my PBA, and I'll say, OK, let's create a variable. So I'll just say set a variable. Now, what kind of variable you will create? So as you can see, you can select a variable and put the value. For me to create a variable, I'll say create new. And instead of this unknown type, I will say, uh, I want to do something which says parse. Yeah, sorry, I chose the wrong option. If I do this, as you can see, it's just giving a very generic type of variable. But for this to work, I have to make a table type of variable. So I will just delete this and do in a different way. So go back to this, go to variable management and click on parse value. And when you say parse value, it automatically detects, parses the information that you give it, and it decides what type is the best. So in this case, I'll say parse value, 
and I'll just put the copied information that I had. So same information that I copied from here and you can get this information here. Now, instead of data type, I'll just say from sample data. I tried using other options like table, but somehow that did not perform very well for me. So I always use from sample data. And here I'm just going to put the same data again. So in this case, Power Virtual Agent will be smart enough to look at this data and determine that this is a type table, which is like array type table. And it also see the schema of this. And then that's a type of variable it's going to create. As you can see, now if I say save as variable and create new, it's creating that variable and automatically it changes the type to table. So you might think that, oh, you put the same sample data and that's a data type and you're also putting the same value in the past value. Yes, I did that. But the advantage of this is like tomorrow I can keep changing the value of this. So tomorrow if I have to, let's say, here add one more product or change something here, I need to just put it here. But my schema will remain the same if my schema doesn't change. And I can use this variable here uh, in the next adaptive card. So that's what I'm going to use. Let me also change the name of the variable so that it makes more sense. Although var1 will also work, but in general, I'll follow some best practice. So let me see in my sample what name I used, and that's the name I'll also uh, use for the variable. So as you can see, you will learn later that in this code, I'm using something called for all. And if you're familiar with my uh, other concepts that I taught about Power Platform in general, especially in my Power Apps videos, I did use this concept called for all, which is like a loop. And in for all, you can actually iterate through the elements in the array. And that's what this adaptive card will do by uh, me putting this here. But the other thing that you'll see, it says topic dot product data. So topic, uh, this is a convention that you have to follow. When you said, when you have to use any variable, this product data was the name of the variable. And I'm going to use this name, product data. Let me just copy this here. I'm just going to use this name for this variable. So let me go back here and change the name of this variable to product data. It's done. So this belongs to this topic. So the syntax that you have to use, you have to say product, uh, sorry, topic dot the name of the variable. The name of the variable happens to be product data in this case. So now I'm just going to copy the whole thing here and paste it in this adaptive card. Let me open this and make this full screen. So I'll just get rid of these cards that I had manually typed and I'll use the template. And for the template, I'm just gonna go back here and I'll just copy whatever I have inside body. Although you can copy the whole thing and put this inside the body. Uh, just give me, let me just copy the whole thing. I think that will make it easier. Uh, okay. Let me go back here and just copy the whole thing. And all the errors are gone, I think. They're not gone. Oh, yeah. So one thing that I forgot to tell you is that we just undo all these things. So once you have JSON like this, for you to make these changes, all you need to do here is go to the formula. The Why formula? Why not just JSON? The reason is because here you're using some function. Uh, function is like for all function, which is power FX version uh, function, the same function that you use in power apps and uh, other power platform products like power apps or power automate and things like that. So that goes in the formula rather than JSON. 
So I'll go to the formula view and now copy and paste. Interesting thing is that some syntax changes there. For example, this time when you have to put your JSON, you, you, don't, you should not put the double quotes for the keys of these JSON objects. So now let me copy paste. I think I already had it in my clipboard and done. So now, as you can see, it's not giving me any error. So make sure you remember this that for you to make changes and do some advanced concepts where you're actually making use of the variable, you switch to edit formula mode and then copy it. And now I think I should be all set. So let me save it and test this. And as you can see, it's taking data from this variable. You can check the value of variable also from here. You can see the number of items. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see the number of items here. So these are the data. It's taking this data and putting in the format that you define in this. And what essentially it is doing is looping through the variable product data, which is array of products, and then applying it to the format that you gave for each and every item. So there's something called container type. Within container, you can define multiple items. And those items are the array variable that you have here. And these items are using the different, uh, uh, you can say UI components, like text block, text block. You, can, you could have also put uh, some uh, buttons or whatever. Uh, I covered these concepts in the previous video. So using those basic blocks of adaptive card, it's iterating through the table type variable and repeating that and putting it all inside the container um, container type of object inside the adaptive card. So that's how you can easily get the repetitive pattern like this using adaptive card and get a value like this. Tomorrow, if you have to add one more product, or modify something, you don't need to touch your adaptive card at all. All you need to do here is change the data. Now with this setup, hopefully this is helpful and you understood how to use adaptive card for these kind of advanced scenarios. And let me know if you have any follow-up questions, if you have comments or feedback. Now in this one, we are using the value in the variable and I just pasted it here, but you can think about doing some more advanced things. For example, rather than putting it all in the variable of your bot, you can also retrieve this value dynamically from some other data sources. So uh, I can do a video in future where I'll show you how to get the list of the product or list of some people or whatever information from, let's say your SharePoint list or some other data source. And for that, you have to use Power Automate to build this kind of data, bring it to the Power Automate, sorry, bring it to Power uh, Virtual Agent, PVA, and then use this kind of model that I showed here to present it in the bot. So hope this concept made sense. Uh, let me know your thoughts and feedback. I'll subscribe to my channel and I'll keep making videos on different aspects of our platform. Thank you, have a good one.